Hi, I'm Penny and this is my channel. So today in celebration of it being YouTube's Geek Week, I thought that I would share with you guys my geeky history around games. I've grown up playing games, as long as I can remember I've been playing games. I thought it might be fun to kind of go over the history and what consoles I played and games that really stuck out to me while I was playing them when I was a child and when I was a teenager. I just thought it could be fun and then to kind of see what games stuck out to me and kind of formed me into the gamer that I am today. So starting out, for those of you who don't know, I was born in 1991. I figure a lot of you guys apparently don't know this because in the comments section I often get comments asking how old I am and people tend to get younger or older and a lot of you actually get it pretty much right. So I was born in 1991, which was around the time when the home console, I guess like the rise of the home console was really starting. We had a Nintendo Entertainment System or a NES when I was growing up, as long as I can remember I think from the time when I was born we even had a NES, so I grew up playing games on the NES to start out with. My dad had one and my aunt had one as well, so pretty much wherever I was I had the option to play one. So I started out with the classic Super Mario Brothers, of course. On the NES I pretty much only played Super Mario Brothers 1, 2 and 3, Tetris of course, and this World Cup soccer game that me and my sister used to play a lot. I mean, I wasn't super into sports at that time, I wasn't like really interested in sports outside of this game. Um, I think we mostly played because you could do this backflip mood. If, if you if you pressed A and B at the same time, your character would do this backflip, and if you like got the ball with the backflip, would smash it towards the goals and knock out any players in the way. And we played it a lot, but most of our playing was just trying to perfectly execute that backflip goal. We skipped the Super Nintendo completely in my household, which looking back now is definitely a bit of a shame because there are some fantastic games that I would have loved to experience during their prime. Going back now to play them is still fantastic, but it's not, not quite the same. We had a few handhelds as well, an original Game Boy and a Game Boy Color, and a Game Boy Pocket, but I played those a lot, but nothing really stood out to me there. Nothing there is something that I look back and think, yeah, I'd love to play that again. It's just, they were fun at the time. However, the next step we took in gaming was getting a Nintendo 64, which is ultimately and without a doubt the biggest influence on me as a child as a continuation to keep gaming. I mean, the Nintendo 64 sucked me in. It took away thousands of hours of my life, and it's the definitely the number one reason that I really got into games and stuck into them and you know kept playing for the rest of my life. The Nintendo 64 just completely amazed me. It wasn't even about I mean, completing the games, there are very, very few games on the 64 that I ever got around to finishing, but it was more of just having the option to explore so many worlds in like these massive 3D environments. The 64 definitely spurred my level of platformers with things like Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, there were just so many platformers that sucked me, and especially the rare ones, they were completely amazing. Not to mention both the Zelda games, Mario Kart, Diddy Kong Racing, even Pilot Wings was one that I played a lot. It wasn't about finishing them for me, it was just about, you know, I guess immersing myself in this amazing other world inside this console, and I just spent hours doing the most repetitive things inside the games. I mean, it definitely wasn't about, at that time, it wasn't even so much about the amazing stories they could offer, it was more about just being able to immerse myself and experience this, this other world. I found that really amazing, and that's, I think, the reason that I kept playing so much at the time. The 64 also introduced me to the amazing RPG genre with Paper Mario, a game that to this day remains one of my favourite RPGs and one of my favourite games overall. After the 64 we did eventually get some more consoles, a Playstation 2, a GameCube and a Wii eventually a long time after their release dates, a DS as well, but none of them, I mean they had some fantastic games, but none of them stood out to me nearly as much as the 64. Looking back though, I definitely, um, I guess feel kind of sad that I didn't utilise the PlayStation 2's library at the time, because there are some fantastic games on the PlayStation 2 and it has such a massive library, but at the time, I mean, I played like two or three or four PS2 games, it was definitely quite a limited library that I had, and I just wasn't that interested in finding out more, I just wanted to stay with my Nintendo, I'd grown up with them and I knew what they were about. This probably brings me up to around my high school years, which there is one game from my entire high school, like five years that I spent in high school, there is one game that sticks out the most and it's easily The Sims 2. It was the first PC game that I got so invested into. I mean I'd played the original Sims and I'd played a few games on PC before that, but The Sims 2, I would get up in the morning on a Saturday, 
I would play non-stop until Sunday night. I would just constantly play that game, making new families and new houses. And it's looking back now, and The Sims is a great series, but I don't know how I managed to invest so much time into it and never get bored. It was, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of strange. Once I finally stopped being super obsessed with The Sims 2, I moved on to my very first MMO on the PC, which was the Korean 2D side-scroller Maple Story. Uh, my time definitely could have been much better well spent because it was such a grind fest. I think they've actually made some updates recently to take some of the ridiculous grindiness out of it, but at the time that game was a ridiculous massive grind fest, but I invested so much time into it. I had a fantastic guild full of friends that I loved, and it was just... Kind of ridiculous, but I played the crap out of that game. After I finally stopped spending every waking minute playing Maple Story, I did move on to experiment more with PC games, eventually got myself a good gaming PC, picked up a PS3 eventually, moved into a house with a 360, and that kind of brings me to where we are today. I've moved on from being a dedicated Nintendo fangirl, like easily a massive Nintendo fangirl, moving on more to a PC Master Race kind of thing, but I pretty much will play anything nowadays. I'll give anything a go once, which is more than I could have said 10 years ago. I feel like I grew up in an amazing time for the home console. I've seen it go from, you know, 8-bit Super Mario Bros. side-scrolling platformers up to, you know, the amazing graphics we have today, the Oculus Rift virtual reality, and all these amazing advancements that have been made. It's been a hell of a ride, but I'm glad that I grew up in that time. I feel like, in terms of gaming, uh, the year that I was born, 91, was a good time to experience this, you know, the massive, massive advancements that have been made. Anyway, that's pretty much my gaming history up until now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys found this interesting. I would love to hear your own sort of gaming histories, games that really stood out to you as a kid, any experiences that you had that really, you know, maybe made you into a gamer and things like that. I'd love to read them, so please, if you have any to share, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below, along with any positive or negative feedback that you might have about this video. Remember, as always, that you can like and favorite this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel, Super Pony Land, if you're not subscribed already. Follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Links are in the description below. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of YouTube's Geek Week. Bye!